Right, so what are we opening today? Well, we're gonna dive into some Yu-Gi-Oh! So yeah, this is this is my childhood in a box for a reasonable price. And guess what? You get one, two, three, four, five, six packs. Huh. Six packs, reasonable price. What does this remind me of? Anyone? Anyone? Anyway, this is how you do an anniversary product and how you make people okay with spending, you know, $1,000, $2,000, because it's enjoyable and it's cheap per unit. So I've only got one box. The reason for that is all my pre-orders, I pre-ordered everything together, as dumb as that sounds, because I thought everything was coming out all together. Obviously it's not. This is a year of, of anniversary, so to speak. So each, each of the reprint sets are coming out one by one. But obviously I now have to wait till the last one comes out to, to receive all my boxes to open. But again, just before we do open it, well, before I cut it open, the touch on MTG30. The rationale between MTG30 was the fact that you had to spend, you know, a thousand dollars on uh, a pack of four, well, a pack of four packs. And that is what leaves a sour taste in your mouth. You take something like this product where you're spending, I think in the US it's, it's like 50 bucks, maybe 40 bucks. When you pre-ordered, pre it probably was cheaper. You're spending that low amount compared to $1,000 on a box of nostalgia. Again, I don't expect these cards to hold value or be worth anything. It is nostalgia. I'm doing this because this is my childhood. And yeah, because it is $50 box, not $1,000, I'm more than happy to spend $1,000. Do you sort of get how that works? We love cheap things. We love buying tons of cheap things. We hate buying singular expensive products. How does this come out? So yeah, so that's just a little rant. If you if you wanted to boost sales, again, they should have made it affordable when it comes to MTG, and they could have they could have sold a lot more than they than they did. Right. So obviously we have our well our one what is it twenty fifth anniversary prismatic or centurion or something like that uh promo and then the set of obelisk or the god cards and then of course blue eyes dark magician and red eyes and then our six packs blue eyes uh legend of blue eyes sorry metal raiders spell roar sorry ours and ours you'll hear it every time spell ruler pharaoh's servant dark crisis and invasion of chaos the only two that i really care about are those two they're what i i grew up on by far the most packs that I opened came from these two sets. The other four, I don't know, I guess it was a wash, or maybe this was when I started Pokemon and then dived back in, something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave them last. Dark Crisis, I probably care about the least. Uh, Thousand Lives Restrict is in Spell Ruler, Ruler. right? So they're like meh. Metal Raiders, I do like a good old fusion between uh, Red Eyes, Black Dragon, and Summon Skull. So yeah, we'll do it in this order. And then we'll tackle the promos. So, my childhood. Ah, obviously they don't look or feel like the old cards. That was probably one of the big things there. They're stylized as a modern printing, so say. But still, the simple fact that these are cards that I can recognize given the say things. Horn of the Unicorn. Iconic. Megamore. Even more iconic. Is that, is that a decent pull? Is Megamore still worth something? Uh, what else? What other cards do I know? Kappa. <laughs> Come on. Schoolyard. It was as much of a troll as it is an uh, internet meme nowadays. Cool. So, I, I think... Oh, do they say rarity on them? I can never tell. Do I even... Like, going through the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I do have left. I have no way to tell. I know it's the colouring of this, but then the foiling everything makes it a super secret rare. A secret rare. Either way. I'm just here to see the cards I remember. What do we have? Wicked Beckering Flameberg. This card, I'm not too familiar with. Again, this is a set I'm not too familiar with. And a Guardian Growl. Iron Blacksmith. Final Countdown. It's definitely memorable. A uh, Keldo. And then a Rod of Silence. There's a joke in there. Anyone who wants to make it. I, yeah, I just want to get to the last three. Well, I guess I am happy with Metal Raiders. All the Moth cards. Cyber Falcon. Ah, I remember you. 
I, I like animals and birds. So you'll probably see me open, I think I'm going to do Amazing Defenders, because it has Pearly and all the cat stuff in it. Omni Tank. No, Monster Recovery. Interesting. Science Soldier, Bite Shoes, Dark Bats, and a Ground Collapse. Okay, these are the three goodies. Let's see what we can pull. Ooh, very easy to pull. Jellyfish, Petite Maw. There we go. Mystic Lamp, a Roaring Ocean Snake, Cannon Soldier, Bottom Dweller, Electric Lizard. <laughs> I'm not going to try it. Block Attack, definitely found in the Joey decks. Right, Invasion. You know, I'm going to leave, even though, you know, most people would leave. Legend of Blue Eyes to last. I'm really Vage Chaos. No, both uh, Envoy, Chaos Dragon, whatever it's called, and Dark Magician. The Dark Magician, well, the one, etc. Again, I'm not great with names. I'm just jumping back into it. Forgive me. Right, I meant to read, aren't I? Forest. Uh, uh, land cards. What were they called? Field. Field cards. There we go. It's right up there. No, it's not, but the symbol is. A field card still a thing in Yu Gi Oh! Petite Angel, Legendary Sword. Hitsumai Giant. Fusionist. Such a horrible, horrible card. Uh, ooh, Dragon Treasure. Had tons of those. Meteor Bat and a Lesser Dragon. So nothing great, but still. Nostalgia. And again, you can sell Nostalgia, and you can sell a lot more of it at a reasonable price. Yellow Luster Shield. Jade Insect Whistle. Maju of the 10,000 Hands. Chaos Sorcerer. Ah, I love a good old spell deck. Chaos Sessler was pretty broken, wasn't he? Yeah. Robin Zombie. Torpedo Fish. Oh, Robin, Robin, yeah. Robin Zombie should go over there. Gigantus, DD, Bomberline, and Lord Poison. So, I guess uh, you're guaranteed a, a rare. So that's these cards. And then these are super rares. But yeah, right. Megamorph and Guardian Grawl. Megamorph. There's probably like thousands of printings of, of Megamorph, isn't there? And then lucky last, who do I want to see? Dark Magician. Obviously, got to be Dark Magician. Yugi all the way over Kaiba. Do we start with it? Nah. <laughs> okay, so you get a copy of Obelisk, you get a copy of Slifer, of Ra, and then you get not a fan of that art, though, <laughs> to be honest. Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, Ooh, sort of sort. Red Eye, I do like this art over the traditional. So it's like opposite for me. Or is this actually the traditional? And then you yeah, obviously the iconic one from from the, uh, the TV series and any versions I did have of Blue, Blue Eyes and Dark Magician with AV later prints. So I'm pretty sure the tablet came came later. Then our, ah, oh, damn you. Told you, I'm not a Kyber person. Blue Eyes, White Dragon in the anniversary shiny. Centurion Century, however you want to call it. Pretty neat. The little stamp down there. I like stamps and stuff like that. There's a horrible line right through the middle. I sort of get it in camera. It's not perfect. No? Like, it's not even the, because obviously this foiling is like boxed. The line is about here. No, 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 it's not going to come up. Anyway. Before we wrap it up, because, oh, somehow I managed to turn this into 10 minutes. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, just a quick little spiel. So. MTG. And even, even against Pokemon's anniversary celebration. They chose to get greedy and, and almost punish their, their player base. You know, it's not an inclusive event. It's not a, a something to captivate and bring in players. New and old players of Yu-Gi-Oh! because of this price point will have no problem spending thousands of dollars on this. On this. The same amount that MTG wanted for one pack, they will easily spread across every product. You know, there'll be people who buy cases of every every single uh, reprinted box. And then there's obviously people who grab tons of, of these and tons of uh, the, the doorless tins with all the iconic creatures and, well, from each of the, the main characters of the shows. So that is the correct way to market a product like this. Your your whole objective is to feed on nostalgia created through people's childhoods and then fond memories 
of a card game. And that fond memory does not include a $1,000 price tag or a $250 price tag per pack. Okay, it should have been a $2.50 per pack if you really wanted to stretch it. But yeah, what what could you expect? This this will do fantastically. There's no way I don't see it's fantastic. It will do fantastic. Again, I have I've not been into Yugo for ages. Just this past maybe month, I've started to fall back into it, watch a few things, uh, go through whatever cards I do have left. And that was enough to get me in the door. Because this is this is my child. These these packs. I got for for cleaning my room. I got to I got one to pick one pack to open. Okay, you can't you can't buy that type of nostalgia. Well, I mean you can, but it has to be a reasonable price. If this was priced at a thousand dollars a box, I wouldn't. Doesn't matter how fond the memories are, I wouldn't partake in it for that. But at this cheap price, I have no I have no problems spending a thousand dollars on it. Isn't that just mind boggling? Anyway, we'll leave it there. Yu-Gi-Oh! Be fun.